Hi YouTube, it's Jason from MVS Customs here. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the latest version of Unlock My ECU, as well as explaining a little bit about what a locked ECU is and how this prevents other tuners or even Holden from being able to access the ECU. There's a lot of confusion about this uh, and what a locked ECU actually is, uh, so I'm hoping by the end of this uh, tutorial everyone will be fully aware and fully understand what an ECU actually is and why it actually prevents our uh, people from being able to get into it. So starting it off, what exactly is a locked ECU? So a locked ECU is an ECU that has a custom key or password that has been entered onto the device which prevents other tuners or even Holden from being able to actually access the tune or even wipe it back to a factory calibration. Uh, this custom key, think of it like the four digit code on your iPhone or Android. The only way you can actually view the messages or images on your phone is by entering in the correct key. ECUs are exactly the same where the correct key must be entered before you uh, can have access to reading or writing a new tune to the ECU. It's only when you enter in the key do you actually get access to the ECU. Uh, this process of entering the key is also known uh, as unlocking. It's not. It doesn't remove or edit or change anything on the ECU. The process of unlocking is entering in the correct key so that the ECU is unlocked uh, so you can read and write to it. Uh, just like your phone, every time uh, you enter in the correct key, the phone unlocks, allows access for a while, then if you don't touch it, it will fall back to sleep, and the only way you can get back into it again is unlocking it by putting in the correct key. ECUs are exactly the same, so every time you want to read or write, you have to every time enter in the correct key, which is an option that you can uh, perform inside most commercial tuning softwares by entering in a custom uh, custom key. So this software, the whole purpose of Unlock My ECU is to find this custom key. It doesn't do anything else. It doesn't modify the ECU or remove the lock or retune or anything like that. Its only purpose, the sole purpose is to find this key so that it can be entered into suitable tuning software. I'll explain that a little bit further on. Um, today uh, I'm going to be demonstrating on a VZ V6 ECU on the bench setup. Uh, the VZV6 I can't actually be locked but for demonstration purposes because I can calculate the key for this ECU uh, it makes it easier uh, so I can actually demonstrate uh, how to find the key if it was unknown as well as various other features of the uh, of the software I'm also connected up uh, to a USB Elm cable which is provided with every kit and must be provided with every kit to ensure everyone receives the uh, working cable uh, the bench harness if you require one please inquire uh, otherwise, I've got it hooked up, uh, everything's powered up. I have the COM port as auto detect, the board rate as auto detect, and the vehicle selected. So I'm just going to go ahead and press connect. There we go, I'm connected. As you can see, an indication down here, as well as what the device is, and also the voltage of the system being 13.1 volts. Uh, it also detected the ECM, so the, the ECU, which you can see here. It just lets me know that I've actually got it connected up correctly, so the cable and software was able to successfully communicate with the uh, ECU on the bench. So now let's move across to main. So we can now look up a few details about the ECU just to understand what it is and the details inside. So here's the VIN, the serial part number, system calibration, and if wanted I could also actually change the VIN, which you can do on supported ECUs being the E55, which is the VZV6, which I'm currently connected to, or on E38, which is the VE LS, uh, LS2 ECUs. Uh, more ECUs will be uh, added in as I work out the algorithms. Uh, if an ECU is locked, you can even uh, click uh, the use custom key, type in the key, put in the new VIN and click right, and you'll have the new VIN entered. So now moving on to transmission control modules, same deal here, you can read the VIN and serial and you can also change the VIN here by selecting from the supported being T42 or T43, chuck in the new VIN, click right or you can enter in a custom key here. Now moving on to the main part, the seed key, this is the part where you actually find the custom key for the locked ECU. Uh, first off, before you do anything, make sure you click, uh, you click and select which module you're connecting to. So we're connecting to the ECU, so the engine control module. So let's click that one. And also now let's just get the seed and I'll explain this now. So what is the seed? Think of the seed as the hint to the password. So the seed here is 482E 
and it, it's that's the hint to how to calculate the key. So when the ECU is unlocked with just one is, this actual number here calculates to a specific key. In this case, the key to this is actually 3148. Uh, in a tuner locked case, uh, the, you can't calculate a key to the C. There's uh, no set format as someone can actually enter in a custom key or whatever they want, 1234. But generally speaking, it just allows you to put in a custom key if this C looks familiar. If you've seen it before, like it was 1111, and you might think the key is four zeros. So you can test it quickly here. So for those that are a little bit confused on why there's letters in here, uh, this is called hexadecimal. It's just a type of numbering. Just Google it and read up about it so that you're uh, on the same page. Uh, now, uh, let's explain about what brute forcing is. Now, I'll do that after I start this process up. So I'm just going to press find key. Uh, now I need to save a backup. So uh, what is the backup? The backup is just a little feature I've added that uh, allows uh, you to keep a record of which keys you've tried. Uh, this is in case your computer fails or falls asleep, runs out of battery, or something happens to the bench harness, someone kicks it over, uh, so that you actually can see what the last key that was tried that was incorrect, so that you can start off the process again from that key. So say if you got to the key of 3000 uh, and the process failed because it got uh, the computer fell asleep or ran out of battery, you could open up the software again, type in 3000 here, and you can start the process off from there. It's just a little backup feature and it comes in handy because things do happen, unfortunately. Uh, as you can see here, uh, it's going through the numbers. So you can see it found the seed each time, it's the same seed, and it's trying a new key every time. Uh, so it's trying every single key to it finds the right one. So that's what we call brute forcing. So it doesn't edit, modify, or harm the ECU in any way. That's not what this does. It's All it's doing is it's trying every possible key uh, from zero all the way up to FFFF. So FFFF is actually in normal numbering is roughly 65,536 different keys. So it tries every single possible combination till it finds the correct uh, key, which you can see it's still going here and now up to key seven. If you have a look on the left, we have a few details about the process. So there's how many keys that are left to do, uh, how many keys that have been tried, the, to the total time left, so if it was to do the entire 65,000 plus keys, it would take 10,922 minutes. Uh, generally speaking, it only, normally only takes one to three days, but if it was to do the entire range all the way to FFFF, it would take roughly 6.5 days. Uh, I have not heard of anything being that high. The highest I've heard of is up to... I think it was five days, someone said, and that's the only one I've ever heard of. It's normally one to three days. Uh, there's no trick uh, to this. You just set it and let it go. And once it's once it finds the correct key, it notifies you. We can also see here we have the wait time. So it has to wait 10 seconds between each key try. Uh, this is set in stone. You can't change this. It just has to be 10 seconds. It's how the developers have made ECUs. And also we can see a little fun fact being the keys per day, so 8,639. So that's how many keys it can try in a day. Obviously there's more keys uh, that you can possibly try than you can do in a day, hence why it can take multiple days to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this. Yeah, it cancelled. All right, and I'm going to type in our new value, so 3148. I'm just going to start it off at 3148. Seven. So we'll find key. We'll save our new log. So save it as we'll do a 15. Save. All right. So in 10 seconds, we'll see what happens when we enter in the correct key, uh, which will open up a little dialog uh, showing what the key is. There we go. So we found the correct key. So what this means when it was the correct key is it sent the correct key to the ECU, and the ECU answered back saying, "Oh, that's correct. You now have access into the ECU." Uh, so that means I can now read and write a tune to that ECU right now, or I can enter it into tuning software. So I can click the little enter custom key box, enter in the hex, uh, enter in the um, the key as either a hex or an integer. So what this means, so integers are normal counting, so one to fifteen, whereas hexes are the other type of counting, so hexadecimal, which is one to f. Um, different tuning software requires this being put in in a different way. That's why both are displayed here. Uh, so you need to write them both down, uh, depending on which tuning software you're going to use. So the next big question is, which tuning software do I want to use? Uh, this is actually quite a large topic and it's quite complicated. Uh, please, you need to read the product uh, page as I explain it as best I possibly can there, explaining all the um, 
do's and don'ts, which tuning software you need to use. Uh, generally saying a lot of people use HP tuners. HP tuners actually has two sort of locking systems where they put the, they lock the ECU using a custom key. So this little key here, so 3148, so that's what they locked it with. But also, so if you tried to read out, if you, if you use HP tuners and you try to read out an ECU locked by a different tuner that used HP tuners, you will display a little warning saying locked by another tuner. And that occurs because you don't have a license for that ECU uh, and, um, and due to that reason, it doesn't want to show you that tune. So that's what you call a tune lock. It's only HP tuners does that, so it has two little locking systems. Whereas if you use something, say, if you use FE Live on the same ECU, you better read it out, retune it, and wipe it, and whatever you want, no, no worries at all. So that's why I recommend uh, using FE Live first. But on the product page, I do explain this, and I do explain what you should be using and how to deal with uh, custom OSs and all those things. Uh, I do highly recommend sending me an email or... Uh, give me a call, preferably give me a call because this is it is a bit technical, it is a bit hard to explain. Uh, generally speaking, this software is most suited to being tuning shops uh, because you can have a variety of tools available there, whether it be Tuner Cats, which I highly recommend, uh, HP Tuners, uh, FE Live. You normally need a whole bunch of them so that you can deal with custom operating systems and so that you can wipe them back to stock standard and all sorts. And I can guide you through the process and explain everything that I know. I'm still learning and still understanding it all and still getting through. Uh, I have tuners that uh, willingly uh, explain to me how they get through it all because it's it's something that it makes it a lot easier for everyone else to be able to wipe ECUs back and get back on the road, which is what I explain all on the product page. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please post, uh, post below. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Thanks, YouTube.